welcome back. It's time for another book talk video. Today it's Sunday, which means it's science fiction Sunday. I love science fiction. Today I'm talking to you about Alan Dean Foster and three of his books. They are A Call to Arms, The False Mirror, and The Spoils of War. For some reason, they are called the Damned Trilogy, or the Trilogy of the Damned. And I hate that title. I don't have a clue why that is the title. I wish the series had a different title, but whatever. Uh, whoever was in charge of marketing back in the day, I guess at Del Rey Science Fiction Division, thought that it would work. That's my main criticism right there off the top, just so you know. Not a big fan of the title of the series, and necessarily the titles of the novels either, because I think that these stories are awesome. I love these books, but they are not very well known at all. So I want to encourage those of you who enjoy science fiction, especially science fiction, that has got a lot of intergalactic politics going on with war, different alien species. If you like things that have anthropomorphic aliens that are bird people and cat people and lizard people, then you should like this series. It's a lot of fun. You probably know of Alan Dean Foster. When I was growing up, his name was on the book Star Wars. Star Wars by Alan Dean Foster. Something happened over the years. The nice people over at Disney now produced those books and says Star Wars by George Lucas for some reason and he's credited as a ghost writer. That's so strange to me. Also you might have heard of what was in the news in the last few months with the whole Disney must pay in which Alan Dean Foster had to stand up to the big corporation of Disney and demand that they pay him his royalties because for whatever reason they stopped paying him for his Star Wars books. He also wrote the Star Wars novel The Splinter of the Mind Eye, which was a fun book. He was asked to write that by George Lucas before Empire Strikes Back was really worked out. So it is an alternate sequel to Star Wars A New Hope, in which Luke and Leia go after this special item, this special gem, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. It's got Darth Vader in it. It's a really exciting book, as long as you're willing to accept that it's not really part of the canon timeline, but fun with those characters. You might also also know Alan Dean Foster from having written the old Star Trek logs 1 through 10 in that series. He's got a lot of his own books. He didn't just write for Star Trek and Star Wars. He's created plenty of his own characters and had a ton of success with his career. And I get so frustrated that a lot of people don't know about him in science fiction. So that's one of the reasons I'm speaking today. I read these books back when I was a teenager and I absolutely loved them. I haven't gone back back to make sure that they really stand the test of time, but I, I don't see why they wouldn't as long as you understand that genre and the fun elements of that genre. The first book in the series, A Call to Arms, was published in 1991. I, I read these books after the film Independence Day came out, and that film was 1996. So the main character of this story is a Cajun man from Louisiana, from New Orleans. He's a human. He is just part of normal Earth before we knew about all these aliens out there. He is a musician. He's composing some music. He's gone off to be alone to do that. And he happens to be the human that the aliens stumble upon. He's in the right place at the right time. And the aliens that he meets... Ooh. Well, first of all, let me make sure I tell you, having seen Independence Day, I really pictured this character as Harry Connick Jr. If you've seen the film, you know Will Smith and Harry Connick Jr. play pilots who go and fight the aliens with their fighter jets, and it's a fun film. So basically, I saw this main character as Harry Connick Jr., because in real life, he's from New Orleans, his dad was the mayor of New Orleans, he's a jazz musician, it, it just all fit together, but I have no idea if Alan Alan Dean Foster was actually inspired by Harry Connick Jr. when he created this character, or if he was just going for that archetype of a musician from New Orleans and the type of personality that that person would have. Because when the aliens come to him and they say, hey, 
There's this huge intergalactic war going on. We have an alliance. There's another group that has an alliance. We're fighting each other. We want you humans to join us. He is a laid back kind of guy who tries to say, hey man, humans are really peaceful. We really should probably be left out of this war. But you know, one of the reasons I like these books is because they deal with the theme, with the idea, with the question of whether human beings are naturally peaceful or warlike. And that continues throughout the trilogy because mild spoilers here but i think it's perfectly fine for you to know this it says a lot about human nature when humans join the war with the aliens which inevitably they're forced to do which happens in these war situations the humans are awesome like we as humans are awesome at war and we we end up turning the tide of war and making a huge difference but then that brings up the question of what does that say about humanity? And ultimately, by the time you get to book three, leaves some of the aliens questioning what should happen to the humans when this war is eventually over. Because humans are perhaps a bit too warlike and angry and difficult to deal with. There, there's a lot going on here. It's a lot of fun. The weave and the amplitor, the different anthropomorphic creatures. I love the book covers. Like book one, that looks like Harry Connick junior surrounded by those animal aliens book two the cover's not as good i don't like the scientist look as much but you get to see one of the lizard people at least there and in book three they even have one of the bird people on the cover uh, which i really enjoyed if you don't want to hunt down these paperbacks that were published back in the 90s the good news is in 2017 they released a kindle edition that has all three books combined together so you can just get it for your e-reader and have have a nice time reading it. All three books together on Kindle are less than a thousand pages when they're combined like that. I had so much fun reading these stories. They really inspired me a lot. I think that Alan Dean Foster is a great writer. Clearly, he proved himself with Star Trek and Star Wars. He's able to write the action scenes. He's able to bring it all together. So if you're looking for an interesting story that combines elements of a Star Trek or Star Wars kind of situation with all these different aliens and alliances and intergalactic politics and war then i think you would enjoy the series just don't worry about the titles don't worry ah all right i love these books i hope that you will enjoy them if you read them that's it for today's book talk every day is a good day for book talk peace